Hello again, it's Mrs. Lemoyne, and today we'll be doing illustrative math grade five, lesson three, no, lesson 11 of unit three, divide unit fractions by a whole number. All right, today's number talk, just double the divisor. So we're going to be dividing 72 divided by four. 72 divided by 4. So I could set it up as a division problem. Oops, not 72 divided by 2, Miss Lemoyne. 72 divided by 4. And I could say, what? how many 4s are in 7? Well, there's only one 4 in 7. 1 times 4 is 4. Bring that down. How many 4s are in 32? Well, in my math facts, I know that 8 times 4 is 32. So I could say that that is 18. Another way of doing that is I could have said that 2 goes into 72. How many 2s are in 7? There are 3 2s in 7. 3 times 2 is 6 with 1 left over. Bring down the 2. Um, how many 2s are in 12? Well, I know a math fact. 6 times 2 is 12. And then I could take, there's my 2 out of the 4, right? And I need another 2 out of there. So I'm going to take 36 and divide that by 2. One left over, bring down the 6. And I know that 18 goes into, I'm sorry, 8 goes into 16. 2 goes into 16 8 times. So 18. So I just divided by 2 and then divided by 2 again. But here is how I would be thinking about it. All right, 36 divided by 4, well, I know that is a math fact, that that would be 9 times 4 is 36. And 4 divided by 4, well, that makes one whole. If I, if I had four things and I divided it four ways, I would get one in each. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 divided by 4, if I take the whole number 1, and I divide it into four ways, I'm going to get one-fourth, right? Whole number one, divided it four times, I'm going to get one-fourth. What patterns do you notice in the quotients? Well, I notice that they get smaller and smaller. Yeah? Why does that happen? Well, remember that they are as half as many to start with. When the dividend is split in half, so remember that when I divided this in half, I got 36. So when this is split in half, this is split in half. And then we 36 divided by 4 was 9. I can divide that by 9 and get 1. Yeah? And then this is divided by 4. And this is divided by 4. And this is divided by 9. Yeah. So why does that happen? There are half as many to start with, so there will be half as many in each group. All right, fun little warm-up. Let's move on. Macaroni and cheese. Last night, Jada's aunt, aunt baked a pan of macaroni and cheese for dinner. Today, she brought the leftovers to Jada's home for Jada and her sisters to share. What do I notice and what do I wonder? Um... I wonder how good the macaroni and cheese are. <laughs> We've solved problems about macaroni and cheese before. I, I wonder how much macaroni and cheese Jada's aunt brought. All right. Jada and her two sisters share half a pan of macaroni. Draw a diagram to represent this situation. Well, okay, so it's Jada and her two sisters, so that's three people sharing half a pan of macaroni. And when we did the last unit, we did stuff divided by people. So the stuff is half divided by three people. So let's draw that diagram. So here's my pan of macaroni and cheese, and we have half a pan left. And we're going to divide that half a pan um, into thirds, right? Because we have three people to share it with. So Jada would get a piece. Sister number one would get a piece, sissy. And sissy number two would get a piece. So I have to do the whole pan in thirds. Explain how this 
expression represents one half divided by three. So I have one half of the pan divided by three people, just like we wrote above, right? Just like we've been doing, stuff divided by people. How much of the whole pan of macaroni cheese will each person get? Well, if I divided the whole pan, right, by half and then by thirds, we have one piece, Jada's piece is one out of one, two, three, four, five, six. So everybody would get one sixth of the pan. All right. So let's see what's the next part. Create a visual display that shows your thinking about the problems. You may want to include details such as notes, diagrams, et cetera, to help you think. Well, I would just draw the diagram that I just did, right? So here is my pan of macaroni, and I would label that pan of mac and cheese. And we have a half a pan of mac and cheese. And then I had three people who ate that mac and cheese. One, two, three. So Jada's piece, sister number one, and sister number two. Right? And so Jada's piece is going to be, because remember, we have to cut the whole pan, even though there's no mac and cheese in there, to make to find out how much of the whole pan, we have to cut the whole pan up. So Jada's piece is one-sixth. So each sister gets one-sixth of the pan. And we could also write that in an equation. So half of the pan divided by three people will give me one six each. Okay. How does each representation show half a pan of macaroni and cheese? And how does each representation show three equal pieces? Well, we just did that. Let's move on. All right. How much of the whole pan of macaroni and cheese did each person get? Well, they got one six. All right, here we have some more practice of the same type of thing. So four people equally share half a pan of macaroni. Again, so the stuff divided by people will give me stuff over people. Well, let's erase that last part because we're talking about the, not a whole stuff, right? We're talking about parts of stuff. So if four people equally share half a pan, so here's my pan, here's my half, and four people now have to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a different color so you can see. I'm separating the half of the pan of macaroni and cheese by four. And person one, two, three, four, okay? All right, whoops, four. So we have our diagram. This is my piece. Explain how your diagram represents one half divided by four. Well, here's the one half, and here's the four pieces. Okay. How much of the whole pan did each person get? Remember, now I have to do the whole pan, so that means I have to cut this side into four pieces as well. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So each person's going to get one eighth of the whole pan. All right. Five people share half a pan. Wow, we're getting bigger and smaller and smaller pieces here, right? So here's my half a pan of macaroni. And now I have to cut this half pan into five pieces. Okay. And we're going to pretend that they're equally sliced. So here's the half a pan. Here are the people. So how much of the whole pan does every each person get? So remember, that means I'm going to have to go in and split the other side as well. So how many pieces are there all together? There are going to be 10 pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I get 1 of the 10th. How are the problems the same and how are they different? 
Well, both situations are about a half a pan of macaroni, but this one has more people sharing it, so they're going to get less macaroni and cheese. Does that make sense? When four people share it, they get one-eighth of the whole pan, so they get a bigger piece. All right, when five people share, they get one-tenth of the pan. All right, good thinking today. Let's move on. What did you learn about the division today? How can we show examples of what we learned, and what do you still wonder? Okay, here's our cool down. Six people equally share a, pa a pan of macaroni and cheese. Six people. Oh, that's even more, huh? So here's my half pan, and I have to divide this now by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that means I only get this piece here, and I'm going to have to divide. This is going to be one half divided by six people. So I'm going to have to divide the whole pan. So the whole pan is now divided in, on each half by six. So that's six on this side and six on that side. So it's going to be 12 pieces and only one out of the 12 is how much we get of the whole pan. All right. That's it for lesson, what is this, a lesson 11. I hope to see you for lesson 12, so keep like and subscribing all of the pages so that we can continue this work.